pumpkins are a popular pulse in WA, in fact the most widely grown crop covering around 350,000 hectares. Here, just out of Del Wallanyu, lupin grower Rob Nankavell is one of many growers harvesting, storing and using lupin seed. What did this paddock yield last year? I think it was about four tonne, it was pretty good. Yeah, okay. Rob's been growing pulses and cereals since the 80s, but when GIDC and Liebig Group launched Lupin Trials in 2019, Rob jumped at the opportunity to participate. I think I've always been passionate about legumes and lupins, and they've got issues. Just when you think you know it all, you find out that something changes or the weather changes, and you find that you're not as smart as you thought you were. A benchmark study of 27 growers looked at germination impacts for lupins, focusing on reducing the incidence of split seed. Split seed can result from harvest activities such as machinery impacts and manganese deficiency, potentially resulting in yield penalties higher than 70%. When we looked at germination testing at, har um, at harvest time, um, we found that an average of 96% germination pre-harvest and that reduced to post-harvest to around 74% on average. WA's sandy northern wheat belt requires growers to apply a lot of lime to increase the pH, but that makes manganese less available. This is a primary spike and normally when you're putting manganese on, the very first one of these will be that size there. This would be way too late for manganese. Generally applying lime is a really good thing for most crops, um, but for lupins um, that rely on manganese to improve the seed quality, um, it can be uh, detrimental. So we're not saying don't apply lime, we're saying make sure you're onto your manganese testing and applying additional manganese when necessary. For Rob, insights around managing manganese have been a revelation and prompted a change in practice with seed that may be seed for next year getting a manganese sulphate hit. We've learnt where we have the most issues is where we've put the most lime on, which were the most acid soils, and to try and counteract it we're spraying manganese on when the, the primary spike's got small pods on it to try and boost the manganese in the plant to allow those pods and the next order pods to not have a manganese issue. You see these, they've sort of done reasonably well potting up on the primaries, Yeah. quite a lot of secondaries, a few tertiaries happening there and that there's a stage we've got to put the manganese on when those are that big down here. Yes, yep. Machinery impacts can also result in split seeds, inhibiting establishment rates. You can see the amount of damage that's happened in here from the seed and the fertiliser going through the tubes. Yeah, yeah. Going on the trial that we've been involved with with the Liebig Group, a much greater effect than what we thought, including changing rotor speeds that change the, the amount of viable seed to a setting that's way lower than ever been sort of recommended by the manufacturers. If we could put peas through at 320 revs in the rotor, and we'd never ever tried it with lupins. But we found you can also do lupins at the same time and have much less split seed. Rotor speed um, in, in combination with a um, number of auger journeys, but also the moisture at harvest time was a really big factor in that. Um, the Ag Department recommends that lupins are harvested at around 14% moisture. And in a lot of cases, um, growers were harvesting at less than 10% moisture. Germination testing to industry standards is also crucial because seed damage is not always obvious. A visual assessment is not, a, not the best assessment. Um, you can have split seed, which is very obvious, but you can also have damaged seed that doesn't look damaged to the naked eye. The only way to test it is through a proper germination test. Rob, it appears there's a compounding effect. This project, which started in 2019, has now wrapped up with advice around manganese management, going easy on the augers, harvesting with at least 12% moisture and asking the experts to assess seed. But those who know lupins know there's still a lot to learn. If we're going to go to the effort of growing lupins, we want to grow them well and we don't want to have issues around germination. So. Um, this project and there's other projects that are funded through GRDC 
um, that can provide some answers to this. But it is a complex space and there's lots of questions that still remain unanswered. I think we just got to learn more about them. Every time you grow lupins you learn another lesson. What's your biggest lesson so far? You don't know everything. <laughs>